Hey, this is Will from Billy the Brig Cosplay. I'm going to be doing a two-part video series on how I made this guy. Ooh, it's a Loki dagger from Thor Ragnarok. Um, which, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the movie, hardly ever shows up on screen. Uh, it looked cool in the trailers, though. Um, so what I'm going to be doing in th this first part is making a junk mold and a junk casting to help speed along the finishing process on the dagger. And then the second part, which will be coming out very shortly, will be making the final mold and final casting for the dagger. So I hope you enjoy and learn something. So the reason I'm doing a junk mold is to speed up the process of having a finished nice mold and cast. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take my 3D printed dagger and coat it in XTC 3D. It's a cool smooth on product that basically gives you a nice finish on 3D printed parts, uh, especially if you don't have a lot of fine details because it does pool and self level a little bit. Um, it's a two to one part mix, mix it up and you want to pour it into like a foil tray to slow down the curing process. Um, I like to use a foam brush and just put it on, smear it on all over the place. Um, when I'm doing XCC or resin casting or anything, I use these silicone mats. They're silicone cooking mats, but they're great because if you get anything that drips on them, you can actually just put your things directly down on them like I'm doing here. Um, and the XTC, once it cures, will just pop right off. Um, so you don't have to worry about your parts sticking or anything like that. So just a nice even coat on everything. And then you just wait for it to cure. It takes about 24 hours for a full cure. So the next step is making the mold box for your pieces. I like to use foam board because it's pretty cheap and it's really easy to cut and shape a box out of. And if you screw up, well, it's cheap and inexpensive and easy to make another one. Uh, so what I do is first I measure out about a quarter inch around each piece. You want to make sure you have enough room around the piece that there's enough mold to actually keep the shape. I measure out um, all the sides and the cut lines and then what you're going to do is just cut your piece out with uh, an exacto knife or a utility knife and then cut off the corners and then what's really nice about foam board is that you can just take uh, again an exacto knife or utility knife and just score it and then snap it and it you don't have any seam lines on the bottom of the box once your box is all cut and scored you want to get some scotch tape to hold the corners and some hot glue to seal up the corners. I like to put hot glue on the outside and the inside of all the corners just to make sure it's a good tight seal so none of your uh, mold material leaks out. Then I also like to hot glue the master right into the mold box. It makes sure that your pieces aren't going to float away and it makes it easy to take it out of the box later. So again, the key here is in making a junk mold is you want to speed the process up along getting to a finished mold. So what I'm going to be using to make my junk mold is AlgaSafe Breeze. It's a it's a skin safe liquid um, casting material that is for making normally for doing like casting of body parts. But what's nice is it mixes with water. It's a liquid. It's skin safe, so you don't really have to worry about anything. And um, the cure time is just a couple of minutes. So you mix it up. Just like anything else, you know, you want to pour it in with slow and steady into your mold to get around everything. I actually grossly underestimated how much of the AlgaSafe I would need for the first box, so I had to go and run and grab a second measuring cup, uh, fill it up with some water, mix another batch, and pour it in. And of course, then I had more than enough uh, to fill up that mold. Then I also did, uh, you can see I actually have three boxes here one for the pommel, one for the hilt, and one for the blades. And I'll just say it sets up really fast so you can see I'm kind of like smearing it around with this with the stirring stick trying to get it in there as best I can. Um, what's interesting with Alga Safe is that the temperature of the water, probably I guess not surprising, <laughs> the temperature of the water will significantly impact the cure time. So you want to you you want lukewarm water, not too warm or it'll cure really fast, uh, but you also don't want it to be too cold because then it won't cure at all. Um, and then on the last box, I mixed and poured a perfect mold. Then comes the fun part, opening the boxes and seeing how the molds came out. Uh, one thing that was really interesting is I used foam board a lot with making molds, and one of the things with the AlgaSafe molds is they're very moist and wet, uh, and so the the foam board was actually 
kind of falling apart a little bit. So it was a little bit harder to get out of the mold box than usual, um, but, but they, they turned out pretty well. Um, the one for the hilts was a little uneven because of how lumpy it was on the back, so I'm kind of leveling it out here before I pour the resin. And I decided to use Onyx Fast. I had a starter kit laying around. I haven't really been happy with the results I've had with Onyx, but if I'm going to do like a junk casting or something like this, then I figured, what the heck, let's just use it up. Um, Onyx Fast cures really quickly, and that's what you want with Aldersafe, is you want whatever you pour into it needs to have a quick cure time um, because the molds don't last very long and do deteriorate over time. So after just a couple of minutes of curing, I popped everything out of the molds and had a set of junk castings to work on for my finished mold, um, which is going to be the next step. I'm going to take these, finish them up, and then we're going to do a final mold, and that'll be in the next video. Cool. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you learned something. Stay tuned for the uh, second part coming up soon. And if you like my videos and you like what I'm doing, you can check out my website, my Patreon, my Etsy store, any of those things. Um, there will be links and things popping up somewhere around here. Uh, and also, if you've been admiring my awesome Loki horns, this is a resin kit from No One's Design, and I'll include a link down in the, in the show notes uh, if you want to go check it out yourself. But I got the resin kit, and this is just a couple of coats of rub and buff. Ooh, very nice, very nice. All right, see you later.